Hi, Dave here, and today we're going to check out the work of Richard Anderson. Um, I actually found his work through the Guardians of the Galaxy um, film, because kind of like this one, I kind of stumbled upon uh, a few of his pieces, and I found out that he did it. And um, yeah, he does have a very kind of graphical style. Um, and sometimes it does look a bit abstract, especially when it comes to his um, environments. Um, I, mean, I mean, he can always kind of detail things further, but he kind of leaves it to a certain point. Like he has a certain kind of lean where he just stops rendering it or painting over it. And you can actually see a lot of strong shapes from him. Um, this is kind of an example of his impressionist kind of look. Um, where he doesn't really go into detail, he just likes to uh, give or leave the impression. Although because his, excuse me, because his kind of graphical, he likes to keep it cut. Uh, what I mean by that, his edges are often clear, even if there's so much or there's a lot of like um, abstraction in his work, you'll always see this strong kind of graphical like main silhouette um, uh, edge, right? And um, he does focus more on, well, he does like a lot of warrior types of uh, concepts, like knights, he loves samurais, um, samurai, <laughs> Samur samurai, um, and soldiers, you know, typical like soldiers like this one. Um, and what's so cool is that he does have a YouTube channel and he posts his, um, his process. He doesn't do like a lot of voiceovers, but uh, just watching him kind of draw and sketch um it's uh he's actually kind of a minimalist kind of guy where he doesn't uh, spend too much time kind of uh he's not very heavy on the contours if you see the way his sketches is it's usually just one strong stroke at a time um and again it's very it's a very graphical kind of approach and his style is so it's flexible enough to go into like storyboards and from there he can develop that and make it into a more finished look or finished kind of piece kind of like a keyframe art piece and um yeah he, he can kind of go back and forth between those types of things so that's pretty cool because i think he does call himself like a, a keyframe artist uh, a storyboard artist a concept artist and an, illust an illustrator right and he does have a few pieces where he uh illustrated a few covers for books and I think it's because he does have a very notable like a very interesting kind of a uh, style and it, it looks pretty good uh, with this piece you can see that kind of uh, sketchiness that impressionistic kind of thing um, I think this is some kind of samurai concept hard to say um, but I love the atmosphere I love the mood more dragon stuff um, And yeah, he does often leave it to this level where he doesn't render it to such an extent, you know, like it's uh, some kind of matte painting or something. It feels kind of sketchy, very moody, but I like it. Um, it almost has a bit of that watercolor effect, um, this kind of wash effect where uh, some parts are just left kind of as a silhouette, but that silhouette has like a, like a range of subtle value variations, you know? Kind of like an actual watercolor wash. Um, and he's done like a lot of films. So, so I do recommend you actually check out his website because it's kind of categorized that way. I'll be linking all of his links in the um, description below. So this is a Marvel Thor, Marvel Thor kind of concept. Um, and a lot of his work is very dynamic. Like it's always kind of moving and... It kind of fits, or the graphical, his graphical kind of style really fits this kind of dynamic kind of thing. Um, and it's cool that he can do like storyboards, kind of like Dan Milligan. Dan Milligan. I did an art review of Dan um, a few months back, I guess. And uh, it, it just looks cool. It, it's a nice kind of transfer of skills, doing storyboards, doing keyframes, doing concept art. Um, there's this nice kind of um, chain involved and you can if you're kind of good at one you, you can kind of transfer and develop the other things right 
Here you can actually see a lot of that kind of really strong graphical brushstrokes, right? Ugh, very big bro- oh, my stomach is kind of grumbling. Um, sorry. Uh, a bit of splatter brush effect here. And he leaves it often in this kind of level where you can see the strong silhouettes mainly. And sometimes we'll just go a bit deeper and maybe develop or add a bit of lighting to kind of suggest some form. But he does have, like, for example, for this piece, very strong kind of a uh, silhouette. Very imposing poses. Right. This could actually be a print. Um, if he wanted to make this a print, he could um, sell it. Uh, right. And he likes to use the flat brush a lot. Uh, it's kind of a staple, like his go-to brush. Um, I think it's set at pen tilt. Because, um, or initial direction. So these, these are a few like um, sketches for, I believe, a, some kind of book cover. And look at how graphical it is. Very strong shapes. Um, right? And then bam. Right? A bit of photo badging here, but it's not too much. Um, it, there's a bit of transparency in this work. And you can tell in the background, it looks kind of like a... It has a feel of a watercolor kind of wash. Um, where it's not like super opaque. And... Uh, he has a more um, he has more opacity when it comes to his brushwork compared to say um, Alex Ichim or Derek Zabrocki, where they're more kind of opaque. Um, and yeah, it looks pretty good. Even the face is kind of graphical. Um, and technically, I think he can do comics if he wanted to, because he does have a few like panels. Um, I I believe they're more like personal random work, but he could technically do. Um, comics just because uh, for example for this piece just because he's already kind of a good narrative artist like he can tell stories you know like he, he can do like sequential art so I think he can do comics if he wanted to um, here is actually using some kind of a uh, half tone texture um, looks really good <laughs> and again very graphical kind of approach um, I believe I can't remember the guy's name um, Anyway, uh, I, I think there are a few photos in the back, I'm just guessing, for the trees, um, right? But they're set at such a low level, and it's a great way to save time, right? You don't have to uh, draw everything, so that's pretty cool. Um, I love this. Look at how uh, you can see most of the brush strokes, and he does go into like detail into, into like the head, obviously, and... Uh, He's not afraid to show like the the sketchiness of it because I think it does have power. Whoa, I've got the power. Dun, 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 dun. Um, all right, like it leaves like often more often than not sketches look better than the actual like finished um, illustration just because it has some kind of energy. And if you just check out his um, portfolio, um, whether it be ArtStation or his actual website. A lot of his work is very kind of impactful, like it, it just has a strong kind of, like it lasts in your eye, or it, not, it doesn't last per se, but it, it, it immediately captures your eye, right? The composition is there, essentially. So I think he did like a series where he was combining like a dress design with a bird. Um, I love the brush spacing here. Um, it adds its own texture. And he does have like a variety of um, strokes here, so it helps to not make his work boring. Um, he d even though he does have like a favorite kind of flat brush, um, he kind of varies it up with like a lot of texture brushes and stuff like that. And uh, he's not afraid also to show the the sketch lines. Sometimes it adds like it's also some kind of graphical um, element. You could see it as a graphical kind of element that helps make your sketch look actually good, right? Another Guardians of the Galaxy, um, very interesting, very interesting compositions, um, very dynamic, right? And uh, lots of environment designs here. So he is using a few photos. Um, I don't think he does have like a. I mean, I can see in his YouTube channel, he does have, he mostly does the characters and like studies, 
but he doesn't have like a lot of environments um so i'm actually interested in seeing how he works or how he does these sorts of environments or these quick sketches right and they're all pretty kind of interesting looking um i'm guessing he plays a lot with the transform um thing in photoshop to kind of achieve this kind of weird um very very interesting dynamic kind of uh shots right this is cool <laughs> right and e even if there's like photo bashing here you can still see how he uh emphasizes the shapes more um like the photos are all, more often than not just secondary and they're usually secondary to the actual kind of uh, the main kind of silhouette or sketch right and it looks very graphical still even if there's like photos and other kind of effects right the edges are very kind of cut and clear very very graphical looking right pretty cool and it looks so uh alien-ish or it looks kind of i love the atmosphere here so i'm not sure how he desi decides on the color scheme or what's his process there but um yeah but the compositions are great right he does twist the shots a bit and he does the same things with his like sketches so it kind of transfers to his more um um concept arty kinds of uh art pieces where it's a bit more complete in a sense where you have like photos um some set some more detail i guess um and I think it's, it's, it's easier for him in a way just because he has like a quick way of illustrating um, since it's very kind of graphical. Uh, I think it's just easier to do environments when you're or anything else if you just think about it in terms of shapes, you know? And I'm trying to get more into that, especially when I'm do doing my own characters. I want to just um, see the shapes first because it's just easier to kind of break down when you see things as shapes. Because sometimes, I mean, you can understand a bit of form, but I feel like uh, the first thing, it kind of helps, but it feels like it's secondary to the shapes. Just because we do 2D, or I do 2D art, so... Um. Anyway, look at how it's not even super detailed. It's very kind of rough, but it gives you the, the sense of the environment. And um, even though th this utilizes a lot of photos, it's still an impressionistic kind of a uh, thing. Because you're giving the the impression of the uh, the environment and you're not being super detailed about it right um because you can always give this to someone and they can like detail it even more if they wanted to um so yeah i think he did start with like a grayscale uh, sketch and then he just developed it as he went and added some colors and shit and yeah so he knows how to like uh get the right shot of things uh, maybe it's because of his storyboarding or his just his uh, his lean towards narrative types of artwork is definitely an advantage for him um, whoa and he does have a lot of these like black and white sketches grayscale sketches and they're very graphical in nature which i do like very heavy on the shapes um, and even when he does like add color he doesn't render it like he doesn't really show the form too much. It still looks kind of graphical. Maybe a bit of values just to kind of make it look not too 2D, but it's still very graphical in nature. Um, right? That's cool. Right? He's very minimal with the line work. Um, he's very kind of straight when he does the lines, very kind of straightforward. Um, there's usually not a lot of curves. He does lean more towards the straighter kinds of lines. Um, and his sketches look amazing. Now, this is his um, another study of his. He does like a lot of studies of animals as well. Um, this is some kind of cat or lion. Um, and he loves using his flat brush. Now this one, his, his brush does have a bit of noise. So it does have, or at least a couple of his uh, flat brushes 
do have some noise in them. But look at how graphical that looks, right? Now here he does kind of render in a way or suggest the forms a bit more where it's not just one big kind of graphic shape. Um, but it's still very, ah, oh, look at that, that's a beautiful piece. It looks very essential, right? Like it doesn't have to um, do much to say something. Say something, I'm giving up. <laughs> anyway, uh, this this piece actually reminds me of Yi Lu. Um, I did an art review of his work too. Um, just because of the fog and the kind of green atmosphere. Um, but yeah. Like he illustrates the, the character here the same way he illustrates the, uh, the horse. Very, very graphical, very heavy on the shapes. And um, I actually think this is way more effective just because it's just faster and it does have a nice graphic look. Because if, if something is kind of graphical, it just has more impact, I, I feel, um, where it's, a, it's an immediate kind of impact. Um, if you compare it to like more rendered stuff, to more rendered um, illustrations, um, it's more about making your eye last on the piece. Uh, for stuff like this, for more graphical stuff, I think it's supposed to capture your attention for like a second or two. And then the idea is to kind of transfer that to the next page. So you'll get like another graphical image. So there's this kind of sequential continuation of things. So it kind of makes sense that um, he does his is more graphical when it comes to his work just because he does more narrative sequential types of art so um but his illustrations still look kind of uh cool and they can make you last long a bit but they're still kind of graphical and it does give a bit of an impact so i guess it makes sense when he does like covers for books just because it it's an immediate kind of wow you know um and he has like oh i actually love seeing these sorts of pages where you have like a bunch of sketches uh because it feels more like a sketchbook um and you can see the explorations the mistakes the the studies the breakdowns um oh and again the flat brush he loves his flat brush um i'm guessing pen tilt or initial direction um and again some of his brushes do have some noise in it just to add a bit of grit um some splattered brushes here and he likes to mix the um, the flat brush kind of graphical look with some lines as well. So he doesn't always erase the uh, the, the sketch lines at the beginning, you know? Damn, right? It's a mixture of lines um, and shapes. And he's using a bit of the uh, the negative positive kind of aspect here. Where he doesn't even have to like define this leg with the line or with the value. Um, you can kind of just fill in the the gaps yourself, um, and even with this hand or the, with this uh, forearm, um, he didn't have to like draw the edge of this sleeve. He just kind of suggested a bit of folds here. Wow, that's pretty fucking awesome. Um, oh shit, that looks so cool, right? And the edges again are very cut, very strong, very graphical. And whenever he does like colored stuff, like paintings, you can still see the graphical effect. And because of that graphical kind of a uh, look, it just has a bit more kind of a direct kind of impact, right? Like bam, right? Um, and a lot of abstraction whenever he does paint. Um, again, it still looks very graphical. Now here you can suggest, or he can, he does suggest a bit of form, right? It's starting to become a bit 3D-ish, but... He does leave a lot of the areas very graphical. The sword, the lower part of the leg, and the shoes, the background, very, very, it's a nice kind of mix. So he does have a few examples of his storyboarding capabilities, right? It's pretty cool. Right? Pretty badass. Another example of his painted graphical illustrations or sketches, right? Even the way he does the face, uh, it's it's the eye with the eyebrow is just one in one value, and then 
because it's kind of painted, he'll add like a, a, a like a a bunch of extra hues, just a bit to kind of suggest a bit of form. But that's pretty much it. You can still see that kind of graphical strong silhouettes. Um, and again, he likes swords a lot. Whether it be like knights or samurais, he likes them a lot. Um, lots of horses too. I mean, look at this horse. Damn. And I do like that he does post a lot of his study sessions um, on YouTube. So I do suggest you subscribe to his channel there. Um, yes. Oh, this one's pretty moody. Pretty dark, but again, very graphical. It does get a bit more painterly here. Maybe it's because of the texture. It does have a bit of the canvas kind of look. Or maybe it's because of the uh, the brush spacing effect. But yeah, the contrast is obviously in this area. And you can see this white kind of highlight here. Wow, it really pulls you in, right? And it looks like a page from a comic book or a graphic kind of novel. Um, damn, she cute. Um, and look at how he illustrated the armor of this chick. Um, and even the, the reflection in the sword. I mean, he prob probably just made uh, like a shape in the beginning with a lasso tool and then painted within that selection, right? With the flat brush. Um, so it helps to kind of layer things a bit here because he does he kind of wants to keep it graphical and kind of clean Especially in the edges even if it's kind of chaotic and abstract You can tell by the edges. It's very sharp. It's kind of cut, you know He doesn't use a lot of like the mixer brush the smudge tool. He likes to be more graphical even when he uh, paints, right? He does render the face a bit more you can tell there's a bit more form around the eyes and the nose but in the hair, it immediately becomes kind of graphical. Um, same thing here. Uh, it's still it's painted, but it's very graphical in nature. Very nice kind of cut here. Um, really brings out this knight with the horse. Um, it's kind of contrasted by the background. You can see this white kind of uh, lit area. So it makes the horse uh, pop out even more. And obviously because his face is kind of lighter. And it's surrounded by a darker value or a darker hue. Uh, the red and it's going to pop out even more so this is obviously the main focus and then this horse and the knight is the extra or the secondary focus so um yeah again he does uh do a lot of studies lions meow 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 and again th this looks like some kind of storyboard right and the graphical kind of approach really helps to achieve that. Lots of noise in his work. Um, maybe it's part of the brush or maybe he does it after, I'm guessing. Um, and he does know how to like draw cute babes, right? Um, I also remember seeing this fashion. He did this fashion thing uh, with some yellow paint or yellow color and it looked pretty good. Um, and again, he, it doesn't really uh, paint the face per se. He, uh, he, he draws it in. Like a comic book artist. Um, and again, very heavy on the shapes. Right? Very graphical in nature. Um, see how the strokes he does with the more black and white inked stuff and his colored stuff? There's hardly any difference. Um, there's just more strokes and it's more colored stuff. Just because it's kind of like, it's already kind of becoming a painting. But you can still see that graphical. Um, thing in his work here the face is starting to become more developed the nose right but the hair you can tell it's very graphical uh, the, the background is just like abstract essentially um, ooh. again very graphical in nature um, I love his black and white stuff and he likes to use the half tone uh, half tone texture I believe uh, kind of like the manga people do um, Oh, this one actually feels like a watercolor piece just because it does have like a wash effect. Like you get like a bunch of hues in one kind of stroke. Um, again, with the swords, he loves his swords. Um, very graphical still. Um, oh, here he does add a bit of a lens correction. You can see the shift between the red and the green. Oh, some eggs, I believe. Um, very, very awesome narrative piece. Uh, really gives you the mood and a lot of narrative art also plays with um, it's not just about the composition um, the moment you start to add like values or color you'll need to play with the lighting a bit um, 
So there's the actual composition, usually done in black and white or line work. And then there's the values. And to kind of get good at the whole value thing, you just have to focus on the lights. Like, can you tell a story through kind of deliberately placing lights in certain areas? And then after that, you get the color. And um, you'll have to know what kind of temperature works for a certain scene um, and stuff like that. Um, again, kind of like a very gesture, not super, it's very graphic, a very graphic kind of stroke. Um, wow. So a chick, I think it's a chick, running with some dogs or wolves, whoa. Here you can see more of his impressionistic side. Lots of brush strokes, I, and I actually like seeing uh, this more just because it's... There's more to see, I guess. Um, so, some character concepts, I guess. Um, oh, you can see a bit of color dynamics with the brush. Um, for a tip. And it does add its own texture as you just keep adding more strokes. Um, cyberpunk? Okay. Right? Right? Even if there's like a lot of... It feels like a lot, but if you kind of just focus in even more, it's just a, it's just a bunch of shapes. Um, so you don't have to over-render everything, right? And kind of create this nice kind of... You don't have to be good at blending. I think that's the point. Because um, he, he doesn't really blend like a lot of things. If ever he does blend something, it, he's going to just create like more strokes in between. So it's very graphical, I guess. Um, it doesn't have a lot of smooth work, right? It's very, very straight, graphical, harsh, hard-edged. Um, not a lot of softness, um, right? Oh, here, it, it does kind of get soft, but the edges are still kind of sharp. Even if it's kind of loose, it's just like a clear-cut kind of thing. Um, it gets looser, looser, <laughs> looser in the bottom of the... Uh, uh, character the legs so and here he didn't he didn't even have to like do a line he just created like a darker background to help the arm pop out so negative positive um so i think he uh, i'm not sure if he used 3d for this one it's hard to say uh but it, it looks cool um again very graphical almost like it's from a comic book or graphic novel uh, so he, I think he does have like videos of this piece on his YouTube. Uh, just subscribe to him there uh, to be safe. Um, and yeah, he doesn't have to render everything. You get this one yellow graphical look. And then you get like this darker brownish kind of a thing. Alright. Oh, this is the piece that I actually like. Because I love the pose. Um... And I like seeing the brush strokes here. It looks like a, it could be, if he developed this more, it could be like a cover for some kind of ma magazine or book, right? Um, and I like, I like that he does a bunch of sketches. And I think that's what makes him super uh, capable of doing more complex stuff. Just because he can do things quickly. And he has like a nice um, mileage, you know, in terms of just drawing characters, environments, and being quick about it right so more oh look at how loose this is it's kind of like a storyboard thing right oh i think this was the one earlier this he started off with a graphic sketch and then he um developed this it or that into this okay so more horror studies um, whoa! Look at those brush strokes, very, very confident. Um, and he loves again that flat brush of his. Right? Very, very graphical. Very ink like. Um, he did use some kind of brusher, perhaps. Like a grass brush. Um, it, it looks like an actual ink piece. Um, it has a bit of a sumi kind of inked feel. And again, he loves his samurais. Um, his warrior types of, uh, concepts. And knights also. Oh, this was for Inktober. Um, great. 
Ooh, I love the noise in this flat brush. Damn. It's very, very gestural. It's not super... Oh, this one's actually kind of smooth. Like, the line work is very kind of smooth and loose. Or just curvy. Compared to his more kind of straight edge graphical stuff. Um, the face gets a bit... or And even the hair gets a bit more graphical. Oh, I love this mask. Damn. So it does kind of sculpt the face or the mask a bit. But it still looks pretty graphical, right? And I love how it gets kind of tighter in the face. Because obviously that's the main focus and everything else is kind of just loose and just suggested. Or we're just kind of, he's just kind of giving the impression, right? Of everything else. Um, more samurai, more samurai. Oh, this one has more gray values in it. Oh, this one does feel more like a sumi kind of painting. Right? Because of this kind of brush stroke, it, it looks more brush-like. And it's kind of set to a, like a gray scale or like a gray, light gray kind of uh, thing. It's not a pure, pure black um, value. So. Ooh. Lots of death. Oh. Very, very strong. Very comic like. Uh, this one does have more darks, not a lot of like grays in it, just black and white. Uh, this one, this this does have a bit more value variation, because uh, this one is way closer. The one in the background is going to be way lighter, so there's a bit of depth happening right now. Um, and it's heavily shape based, not a lot of line work involved. You can see a bit here and here, but that's pretty, that's pretty much it. It's heavily shaped based. Um, so maybe he is like studying like from like studying like old Japanese films. I'm just guessing, but. Uh, Lots of storyboard types of shit. Or artwork, sorry. <laughs> oh, I think this is for the cover. For a book. Um, for a book cover. Um, and again, it's very graphical. Right? Even if there, there's so many values in it. And it does suggest a bit of form. The edges are very cut. Very heavy on the straight edge. Right? Has more impact. Very direct kind of impact. Uh, maybe he did do some 3D here, I'm guessing, just because the arc here looks kind of segmented. And that happens a lot in like 3D. If you don't smoothen the edge. Um, ooh, I love his birds. Tweet tweet. Damn! Hello. Uh, again with the flat brush. Um, some line work here. Very, very minimal. Heavily shaped base. Um, he does render the, uh, the hair a bit. Trying to give it a bit of form. Uh, the face is very minimal. Um, oh, and even the dress has a bit more um, rendering, like the hair. Because um, it obviously has more form. The skin and the face is going to be a bit more smoother, not a lot of like uh, dips in terms of like the form. Um, so. Um, I'm not sure where this is from. But it's cool. It looks more like a watercolor painting just because it has a very kind of wash-like effect. Especially at the edges. Um, like kind of like this one. Like look at the silhouette of this thing. Like a lot of a lot of like watercolor paintings have like a variety of hues in that one kind of silhouette. Usually in the background. In that kind of big wash, right? So it kind of reminds me of a watercolor painting. And a lot of his work, even if it doesn't do like the whole wash stuff. Just because it has more opacity, like his work has more, like it's not very opaque, like he has to build up the paint and you can see like this, like you can see previous strokes beneath. Um, it does look kind of like a, a mix between a graphical look and a kind of wash watercolor look. Um, right? Oh shit. Awesome. I like seeing the brush strokes. It's not super... Rendered, but it's kind of enough to kind of tell a story, yeah. And because it's graphical, more impact. The edges are clear, again. Oh, Some kind of knight, perhaps, with some kind of weird helmet. Um, some nice, I, I believe, this is obviously some kind of lady. I mean, look at, look at how he simplified his figure here, or these figures here. 
Um, and the shot is cool. It's kind of twisted. So you're seeing the whole frame from an angle. From a twisted angle. Very strong kind of a uh, shot. Oh shit. I'm not sure what the green is, maybe it's just to help pop out the, the face more or this kind of top part of the character. Um, but yeah. So I think this guy just killed some kind of giant perhaps. You can see the eye here, whoa. Look at how he didn't even use like a lot of line work with this one. Most of it is just shapes, right? Flat brush. He loves his flat brush. And it's also kind of designing along the way, right? You can already tell like a... What the design of this suit is kind of like. Um, so that's pretty interesting. You don't have to like use line work to uh, do like character designs, right? <laughs> you can just be more graphical about it. Like think shapes. Uh, I believe a cover perhaps for a book. Very graphical. <laughs> Very impressionistic. Um, lots of, well not lots, but some texture. Um, texture. Oh. A few initial sketches, perhaps. Um, right? Ah, very, very cool. Some more studies of his. Whoa, very, very awesome, right? Oh, whoa! I want to do this more in my in my kind of Patreon thing, and because uh, I'm still trying to kind of flesh out what exactly I should do. Um, for that side of things, but ah, uh, I like seeing like sheets or pages of sketches like this. Um, and you can tell even the way it sketches very, very graphical, very like. Remember, oh, this one, this thing right here reminds me of the the line work of my input woe, my input two, my input woe. Um, uh, they have like a, it almost has like a graffiti kind of way of. Where, because uh, some graffiti art has like a, a nice mix between like a smooth edge, like a very curved edge, and then it will immediately go to like a, a sharper kind of edge. Because they, they they do more calligraphy types of stuff, right? So they're, yeah. Th also, uh, Nivan Shantara has a similar kind of um, approach when it comes to his line work a bit. Uh, and I, I, I think he's also an actual like, graf uh, graffiti artist uh, before he started doing concept art. So, yeah, these people generally have a nice kind of... Although Divan Chantara is a bit more... Like, when you look at the sketches, they're going to be a bit more heavy on the contours. Um, but you can still still see a bit of that graphical, that graffiti kind of thing in his um, paintings or renderings, right? Oh! Ah, damn. Nice T Rex here. Oh, damn. Some kind of book cover, perhaps. Um, some kind of eagle or vulture. Um, so these are like initial. Oh, these these are the initial sketches, like sketch one, sketch two, perhaps. And then, oh, this, oh, here you're seeing the, the bird, uh, in its, uh, the shadow form. So it's actually above this person. So, whoa. Genius. Um, but I think he obviously stuck with this one. Again, very empowering kind of look, very graphical. Whoa. Like everything else is kind of just left as is, like not super rendered, but. Obviously, the face is a bit more like it's very heavily painted a bit, right? It's not very graphical. Um, and because of the red here, the night kind of uh, pops out even more. Whoa. Damn. Some more storyboards, right? Very graphical. Uh, this one actually felt like a, I thought this was a watercolor uh, sketch in the beginning. Just because they were like, it, it felt like a wash, even though he did use like a flat brush. Just seeing it from afar, in thumbnail form, I thought he used some kind of like, watercolor brush, right? Um, but yeah, very heavy on the, the shapes, the flat brush. Um, whoa. Oh, here you can see more of the brush strokes. Um, a bit more defined. 
still graphical, but there's a bit more values in it, right? In this kind of hand, kind of a gauntlet, the sword, the face a bit, you can see a bit of reflected lighting. Oh shit. Now this one's just a big silhouette, but uh, he does make the hand here pop out more a bit. But a very, very energetic, right? Oh, this was the initial sketch and then he developed it to a colored kind of version. Whoa. Now this one can actually be uh, a print, right? Uh, this could be a cover perhaps for a book. I mean, I'm just guessing here, but uh, damn, lots of like splatter brushes here, debris. Um, it looks pretty epic. Um, he should sell like prints, um, my opinion, right? Looks pretty cool. Now here you can see more of that shape here with the ship, with the actual like uh, Vikings here. I'm assuming they're Vikings, just because of the ship. It looks very Viking-ish. Whoa, oh, this one looks very, very comic-like. Um, although not a lot of line work, just very heavy on the shapes. Um, you can see like extra scribbles, um, like scribbly kinds of quick lines. But look at how impressionistic that is. Very graphical and impressionistic at the same time. Whoa. Very strong composition here, uh, right? Oh, look at the chaos. I like seeing stuff like this. It's so pretty, right? Um, you're kind of giving the gist of the character. You don't have to detail everything. And um, that's kind of why I like impressionistic types of artists or graphical ones. Because they're, they're, not, they're not really into the whole details and they just want to be quick and raw about it and direct and uh, I, I am kind of that kind of person as well so yeah oh i think he did like a bunch of sniper sketches like daily sketches so damn damn oh you can see a bit of that that's uh, kind of like traditional i think chinese like I'm, I'm sure you've seen like a lot of like bamboo paintings um with the leaves and they have they usually do it with one brush stroke, and it kind of feels that way. Although I do feel he did use the uh, the lasso tool for this one, um, for the leaves. I think he did use like a photo in the beginning to kind of just get the uh, some of the colors out from it. Um, more snipers. Oh, this one actually feels like a comic book page because there's more like line work in it, right? And you can see like the t that half tone kind of look, um, kind of like a manga. So he, he he could, if he wanted to, like do a comic or a graphic novel. Um, so a stormtrooper with the cat. More cats with the trooper. Again, very graphical, right? Just shapes after shapes. Right? Oh, notice how this one has more values than this one. Because obviously this one is in front. Um, it really helps to kind of um, put the this trooper in the back a bit uh, without having to use some kind of soft brush or atmospheric kind of brush. Um, just toning down the values in the back is enough to kind of help the things in front kind of pop out. Whoa. Oh shit, he cut someone's head off. Although it does look more like a skull, so I think it's fine because if you see a skull, it usually means bad guy, so... Yeah. Whoa, very epic. Could be a print if you wanted to. I think it did work for the Tarzan film, The Legend of Tarzan. Um, very, very dynamic. Um, it's almost like a keyframe, but it's in portrait mode, so. Right? So, a bunch of like initial sketches, trying to come up with the cover, I believe. And look at how graphical and loose these are, right? It really helps to be a bit quick. Now this one actually looks more like a wash in the background, right? It's not very kind of hard edged. I mean, it's still kind of, you can still see the edge, but it's, it's not super like cut. It starts to kind of become blurry. Um, and then he settled on this one. 
he started off with a graphical kind of sketch and then painted over it. It still looks kind of graphical, um, but he did develop, like, you can see this elbow here a bit more. The face, it's still very graphical, but there's a bit of value variety. Not too much, but it's still there to kind of suggest the, the form of the face. Um, and in the background, I like seeing this kind of where the edges kind of fade a bit. Where it actually starts to, uh, well, not pixelate, but, uh, almost like a watercolor. It, it looks like a watercolor wash, right? Where it kind of blends with other areas. Um, where you can see a bit of like a hard edge, and then a part of it kind of blends with the, with the rest of the paint around it. Um, that usually happens in watercolor on paintings. Um, those who kind of paint wet on wet, they usually get that kind of effect more. Um, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Another kind of night. Whoa! Right? Very, very impressionistic. Lots of splatter, lots of textures. Um, oh, this one feels more like a comic book. Right? He could do one if he wanted to. Nice use of half tones here. Um, right? Oh, I love this space. Oh, shit. So a lot of narrative, um, sequential art happening right now. Oh, I think we're done. Um, oh, look at how this character just left as a silhouette, right? You can tell it's obviously female just because she is kind of thick. Um, I believe this is Groot. Right? And the uh, the raccoon thing. So that's it for this episode. Um, review reviewing the work of uh, Richard Anderson uh, or Flap Traps Art. Um, I do I do recommend you check out his uh, YouTube channel because he does have a lot of videos that you could study, and I will be linking all of his links in the description below. Um, so I hope this video helps you in some way. Uh, keep drawing, keep painting, and stay free.